What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel today. I'm really excited to be showing you guys this. I'm gonna be demonstrating what I think is probably the coolest espresso machine I've ever seen in my life. And I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy this. So let's get to it. What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel today. For you guys that are new here, my name is Russell. We do a bunch of different stuff on this channel. And today we're doing something that I've never really talked about before too, too much is uh, espresso. Now, if you guys know me, I am a flight paramedic and we run on coffee all the time. I start my day with coffee. I usually drink at least two to three to four to five cups a day, depending on what day, depending on what I'm doing. Oh, I have So anyways, I want to talk to you guys about a super special machine that I recently got and why I'm interested in it, and why I think it's really cool, and why I think that you might think it's cool. So first off, this is a Lapavoni espresso machine. In normal espresso machines, you have a boiler that gets your water up to temperature, which is this back here, and then you have a pump inside that pumps your water through your espresso coffee that you put in your puck and load in here. This bad boy here is completely manual. So you're completely engaged with the process from beginning to end, which I think is really, really cool. If you guys know me again, things in this world are getting too automated and manual things to me have more meaning. Now this takes a lot longer to prepare than it would a regular cup of espresso with a, a normal machine, but you guys are gonna see how cool this is. So back to the machine itself. These things are a very pretty penny. They are made, handmade in Italy and shipped all over the world. Again, these are called La Pavoni Espresso Machine. There's different different types, different models. This is your intro basic model. I think it's called the Europicola, Euro, Euro something, blah, blah, blah. I'm not really sure. These things are going for about $1,000 brand new, which just is blows my mind, but they're definitely worth it. Now this one, goes back to the mid 90s, I believe. I, I'm part of a Facebook group, I'll throw it up here real quick. It's cool how much of a following this this machine and these these accessories and everything has. It's just, just like the car community, which is really cool. I had been looking for these on eBay. Uh, I used one in good condition. It's been running about $400, $500. I had just missed out on one that was in decent condition. I think I had put up a bid for 400 and I got outbid at like 450. And I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. So I was just continuously looking and looking and looking and I finally came upon this one. I think it was buy it now for $230, something like that, free shipping. I was like, Oof, like what? And the description said everything worked. It just needed a little bit of a cleanup, which is 100% true. It does have its flaws and I'm gonna get into that here in a little bit. And I'm gonna get into my plans for this machine. I wanna show you guys why I think this is so cool, the process of doing it. So it's like a normal espresso machine. Like I said, you have your boiler back here, you feed, you put water in it, you have your espresso uh, puck. You go ahead, put this in here, close it. And what happens is the water boils, it's all right here, and there's a piston inside of here. Piston, cars, cool. And what you do is you lift this up and the pressure from the boiler pushes the water through this chamber into the group head. That's what they call this, is a group head. Water fills this, this entire thing heats up. Now one of the hard things about it is not knowing what temperature it is, uh, what your pressure is at. You have your dose of coffee in here, you throw in a your cup underneath, you bring this down, and it gives you your extraction of espresso. Now, one of the hardest things with this machine is getting the ground right, which I have some freshly ground coffee here. I just got from a specialty supermarket here, right around where I live. Um, they have a really nice grinder, but one thing that you're gonna wanna invest in is a good grinder. I'm gonna do that. They get kind of pricey, um, but you guys will see the grind makes a completely big difference. If it's too coarse, the water's gonna flow through way too quickly. And honestly, I've been getting some extraction at the top of this movement. I'll start to get extraction. This was ground at the finest setting that they possibly had, which honestly was a Turkish setting. Uh, there was two clicks on espresso, and then there was Turkish, which was the furthest and the finest you could possibly get. I tried the one and two click on espresso without much good luck. But my plans for the future is, I wanna break this down completely because like I said, there's a couple things you guys are gonna see that are wrong with it. There, right here we have some more, some wear and tear uh, where the steam drips out and it looks like it has eaten away at the coating on uh, the base. The handle here uh, looks like it was dropped and it's cracked and it's kind of rusted. Uh, a lot of people like to do the bottomless portafilters uh, to get a better extraction. Another thing, this thing kind of leaks a little bit 
I need to purchase a seal a seal kit to go through and completely redo this. But like I said, I'm gonna break this down completely, redo it, bring it back to its pristine condition. Uh, I've seen a lot of people doing powder coating, uh, powder coating these different colors, which I think is really cool. But I'm gonna put some custom handles on it, knobs, everything, just make it 100% again and make it exactly what I want it to be. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you do this and i've picked up a couple a couple different accessories honestly i got these off amazon i'll put a link below for everything i'm going to use in this video to amazon i'll link this so you guys can check it out if you want to um my tamper and the sweet no slip pad so that you can get in here and really press your espresso um so yeah link below for all that stuff check it out if you want to but let's get to actually making some espresso all right so i want to start off by telling you guys uh in the espresso community and coffee, and I've been getting really into this and studying how coffee's made with like pour overs, this, and how how important your dosing and your extraction times and weight, and it, it's a complete science when it comes to this. And I've been getting really, really interested in going down the wormhole of this. But anyways, you're gonna wanna have a scale. Uh, what I've read is with these pucks particularly, you're gonna wanna get 17 to 18 grams of compressed coffee in here for your dose and for your extraction, with your extraction being about 30 grams. And like I was saying before, brown of the coffee, the texture of the coffee makes such a big difference. I'm gonna scoop out a little bit of this and just show you guys. The texture and it's almost flower like. Probably really hard to see. Think of almost a flowery texture. This is the finest that the grinder could possibly do. What we're gonna do is go ahead and take out this, our puck, throw it on your scale, and I'm gonna scoop out, like I said, 17 grams of coffee. Now, I've been using plastic spoons and things like that, and like this is like a, this is a measuring spoon, just because I've heard that using certain types of metals might give it different tastes and whatnot, so. Going back and continually to Keep this as flat as possible. It's like we're real close to our what we want to have here in a little tiny bit more. We're gonna take this off, we're gonna try and even it off, and take our tamper, push down. Now what I've heard is keeping your elbow straight, pushing straight down, no open palm, just like that, and polishing it, giving a nice little twist off at the end. We'll end up with something very nice like this. Something very nice just like that. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the boiler. You always want to use some type of purified water. You never want to use tap water that has different minerals and chemicals and things in it that you might not know. What you guys will see over here is there's a, you can see it's a sight glass actually is what it's called. You guys can see how much water is in it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, close this. Now there's two different switches on this side. What I've heard, you have your on switch, which is just power to everything. And then you have a one and a two, which is different power levels. I've heard, take it up to two, let the steam start to blow off. Take it back to one for espresso, let it sit for a couple minutes. So that's what we're gonna do right here. Now, again, if you guys are experts in this or anybody's watching from the Facebook channel or the Facebook group, uh, thank you for coming over here. And if you guys have any tips or comments, please let me know. I'm very interested in this stuff. And like I said, I'm really excited about this machine in general. So we're gonna go ahead and let this warm up and then we're going to go ahead and extract our coffee. All right guys, so we're starting to get some steam coming off of this part right here, which so that's a safety valve so that this thing doesn't explode. Now at this point, I'm gonna flip the switch back to one. You guys are gonna see what happens. So I just flipped it back to one. It should start to calm down a little bit. There we go, she's calmed down real nice. So at this point, one of the things you have to watch out with these machines is this entire assembly is starting to get very, very hot. And that means it's working, but the heat starts to pass through this. Right now, the front's still cool, but the sides are starting to get warm. This is pretty hot. Uh, this is what you want to get warm for proper extraction. If you touch this back here, you're going to get burned. So we're going to let this sit for a couple minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and take our dose and our quarter filter. I'm going to install that, and I'm going to show you guys how cool this is. All right guys, so this thing is nice and heated up. It's right about where I want it. Now, I didn't tell you, this coffee that I got is an, a cinnamon blend. A cinnamon and hazelnut, I believe it was, is what it was. So I'm interested to see how this goes. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take quarter filter, my dose, inserted. I'm gonna lift this just slightly. Go ahead and insert the quarter filter. 
Make sure it's nice and tight. Actually, I'm gonna take this, put it on here. And like I said, this, you're supposed to get about 30 grams of extraction with this machine. Now from what I've learned, from what I've read, I'm gonna go ahead and take this up slowly. Now you'll see if I get any extraction at this point in time. All right, no extraction yet, which means that I'm probably good on my grind. Still no extra, ah, I got a little bit. You guys, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, I've heard to leave this for just a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and pull this bad boy down. Nice and slow, but with good tension. Now this is saying that's at 32 grams, which is awesome. Per right where I want to be. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take this out, drop this down, shut the machine off, because that's just what I do. Let me show you guys this. This is what you want. This cream on the top, which almost resembles like a Guinness or something like that. Now, when I taste this, I've made multiple shots of this before. And I think the biggest problem with me is I, I don't know if it's temperature or if it's length of extraction, but sometimes I'll get a delicious tasting shot, tastes really, really good, perfect. And other times I'll get one that's kind of burnt, uh, the flavors aren't there, and it's kind of just not exactly very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste test this real quick, which the aroma is amazing. Like I said, that crema, crema, crema on top looks fantastic. Oh wow, that's actually really good. And, the perfect thing, which I don't know if I'm doing this right or not, when this comes out, when the extraction comes out, I just unplug it there because, again, this is an old machine, and I get a little bit nervous with older machines and older electronics, but this is delicious. Absolutely delicious. I don't know what I did right here. It's not bitter. It's got good flavors. I'm actually very impressed with myself. I made tons of these, not tons of them. I probably made a handful of these that came out awful. So anyways, this is blowing off pressure. One thing I should have done that I kind of forgot, um, People say the bleed false pressure, so what you're gonna do is open this. Woo! Open that up, bleed off false pressure. That's for filming milk. Uh, if you're gonna make like a cappuccino, espresso, or a cappuccino, a latte, things like that, you're gonna film your milk off of that, which I've tried. You guys can see it's kind of dirty. I think this is so cool. And with this, you feel like you put the work in, you have control over everything, and this great shot of espresso is just cheers to the work that you just did. It's just like driving a manual transmission car. And I'm gonna be doing a full build series on this, guys. I need to order my seal kit, uh, which I'm gonna be looking around. I need to find out exactly what year this is and whatnot. Uh, if you guys have any idea, let me know. Uh, but I need to find out exactly what it is because they differ year to year, different parts, different seals, things like that. But I'm gonna do a full restoration, powder coat this, and just make it look really, really cool. Anyways, guys, on that note, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you stopping by and watching me make this fine cup of espresso. Uh, like I said, coffee is one of my passions that I want to start expressing more on this channel. Make sure you guys follow my Instagram. Uh, that's linked down below too. Other than that guys, drop me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you want to see. If you like this, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. And make sure you smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time real, real soon. Thank you so much again. And uh, have a great day. Peace. In case you guys know this, don't know, this is my little pupper's Bailey. He's a little beagle boy. He's about two years old. Say hi, Bailey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Maggie. This isn't my dog, but she's a, little, she's a happy little thing.